Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's newsletter, The Tiger Forex Report. He puts a new issue out every week on Mondays. He's got updates throughout the week when warranted. You can come on over to the front page of TFNN. You hit the newsletter tab. You hit subscribe. It's $97 for the month, folks. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. When you sign up, you also gain access to a couple of archived webinars. Teddy just did one in April uh, talking about the forecast for the webinar, but things may be changing as we got a new Fed regime uh, with pausing slash skipping. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So let's talk a little bit of Fed, man. We know you've been talking about hikes, and I was surprised, especially by kind of just uh, – the general verbiage, we get the chairman's remarks already out this morning. He's talking in 17 minutes in front of Congress as well, um, but kind of surprised with even the language that he used. Uh, they're trying to sound hawkish. I'm not sure I believe it. What do you think of the Fed action, man, as they pause? Uh, I'm very surprised, absolutely surprised that they did. I thought that they would be going for rate hikes for at least another few sessions before they uh, put a pause on. So uh, especially because the economic data I don't think is – reflecting what they really want as far as their goals yet you know i don't think they remotely achieve what they're trying to you know at least what they said they were trying to do you know so yeah i'm definitely very surprised that they have uh stopped their uh their rate hikes i think we still have more to come uh this this whole pausing and now even potential easing talk that's going on i think is a little bit of a you know getting ahead of uh, you know ourselves if you will so i uh, will see what happens with the pause you know let's sure. see how the economic data comes out over the next couple of months i really don't think that over the next couple of months these numbers are going to trend enough in the right direction to warrant them staying on a pausing basis and not go back to a, um, a hawkish uh, outlook yeah and it would seem like i mean we all know they got they got a long way to go that's for sure man um and i think they're getting a little hopeful my opinion in terms of where we go and and Maybe they give it a few months. Uh, I don't know how they come back. What do you think about the next meeting? And I know we're just, you know, not throwing darts mm -hmm. here, but nobody really knows what's going to happen. But it, it's interesting that if they're willing to pause right now, right, is is anything going to change by July 28th in terms of that much data that really is going to change things? It, I, I find, you know, the next few months, yeah, you can see some action, I'm sure, as, as the numbers plow in. But even when I'm just looking at July, I'm like, well, if they're there right now, man, what, what's going to happen in July? Um mm -hmm. That could be so dramatic. You know, you got a few months of data that persists. I think it might be undeniable. But if they're willing to go right now, I just don't see how things change with July. What do you What do you think about you know one month, three month type scenario going forward? Sure. Well, I think one month. The only way you're going to probably see them go back to a hawkish stance right away in a, at the next meeting would be if let's say unemployment uh, for July comes out. You know, in a couple of weeks, it really comes out good, meaning yeah. that the unemployment goes down to an extreme degree. You know, yeah. maybe where it goes back to the levels where it was like two, three months. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't know exactly what the amount of that of of a drop would have to be, but something sure. like that would go against their their narrative of what they're trying to do. So that would be a big one. Um, and then I think you're going to have also your other inflationary numbers too. Like you got to look at what's going on in the EU and the UK. You know, they're they're imploding because of inflation. You know, and that's going to be reflective in our market as well and I think that the, especially you have to watch the transports you know and things like that I mean if, if especially if unemployment does go down extremely um, sharply and then if you do see at least not necessarily a flattening but a rise in any type of inflationary numbers you know like with CPI and PPI then I think yeah absolutely they could jump back on the hawkish stance maybe not in July but they might start leaning towards saying hey if this not these numbers start trending back up that we will be going back on the hawkish stance. You know, so I think that's yeah. for in, a, in a one to three month period, that's how you can look at it. Nice, yeah. Hey, we have a question. Uh, we got a caller on the air, all right? Let's sure. jump over. We got Jeff from New Jersey, and they got a question for you, Teddy, about talking about arbitrages between cash and futures. Jeff, good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Uh, right, that was my question <laughs> uh, for Teddy. Is, is it possible to find arbitrage opportunities between the FX uh, cash market and futures market? Um, yeah, so what you're talking about there is like when you're trading premium at a discount or at a um, – uh, okay, like for instance, if you're talking about trying to pull that kind of ARB off, uh, you have to have, first of all, really good liquidity and really good data feeds. Uh, that is very, very key. Uh, so in order to pull it off too, 
Um, you you got to look at what if you're going to try and do that, you have to make sure that you're trading the front month future for sure. And you got to be careful around the rollover months. So I would say that especially like when you have, you know, your, your roller, your expirations for those uh, contracts would be March, June, September and December. So during those four months or especially like the, uh, the last week of the month prior to that, I'd be very careful trying to pull off an arbitrage between the cash market and the futures because you have a lot of spread uh, rollover which will cause a price mm-hmm. differential where it's going to really scramble that trade up. Um, but there is, like for instance, when it comes to numbers especially, uh, if you have um, a lead in one, uh, you can lay off in the other. So I would say when you have, but now once again, that gets back to your liquidity. If you don't have a very solid connection, you're going to be behind the curve or your execution is not going to come off that well um, in either the futures or in the cash market, especially, you know, so that's you're, kind of trade. You're saying because for, the, they catch yes. up with each other so quickly. Uh, yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. You know, I mean, for to really pull off that trade successfully, um, you're looking more at an institutional type of trading environment where you really, really, really have to have direct market access. So if you don't have those components, I would just try I'm just going to be honest with you. It's going to be very rough to try and pull off that kind of a trade. You know, I mean, does it exist? Absolutely. Um, Just the ability to pull off consistently those trades, um, that's going to be very, very difficult. So but it does exist. I mean, especially like. Um, I, like you can do it for both the S and P's, you can do it for the bonds, you can do it for the cat, you know, for the currencies. Um, that trade does exist, and usually, like what you have to do is look at the trend premium. You know, for instance, if your if your market's trending higher, okay, for instance, whether it's uh, euro, pound, whatever versus whatever currency, and, and that futures. If you see one that really, really jumps, and you're going to probably see it more in the cash and the futures, you know, that would be a, a situation where you can sometimes ca- catch that lag in that arb. So those are the situations where um, if you're going to look for that trade, those are the moments where you have to be there. Those are your most highest probability of, of having those situations and being able to execute. You know, So it's something that on a day-to-day basis, hour in by hour out, um, it's going to be a very tough trade and I wouldn't, I would advise against it though, just to be, you know, straight. Right, so it sounds like for the retail trader to, if you notice uh, a jump in the cash market, quick go look at the futures market if it hasn't jumped yet maybe it's about to right Exactly. Now, but remember, if you're trying to do that trade, you're looking for a scalp that's not something that's going to hang on very long, yeah. especially with the futures, oh, yeah. because you have the spreads. You have to be take that into account. And Jeff, I think, okay. and Teddy, if you can, if you can, I, I'm not put words, but I think what Teddy's saying as well is, you know, the technology that you need, and it's almost something that in a lot of places, if it was that simple, though, Jeff, wouldn't computers almost be not computers, but you know, if it was that simple, where you know, cash is moving and then you just get ahead of the futures. Isn't that where you're really dealing with almost, this is where AI and computers are almost starting to take over to eliminate a lot of those ARB opportunities. Is that true? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that's why I was asking is that I, I figured the, the futures in the cash market must be so tightly bound and computers are so yeah. fast. Uh, and there's so many traders that you might be able to, Jeff, possible. like Teddy was saying. But I think that was a great answer, Teddy, because man, that's Thank you just got to be so fast nowadays with computers, Jeff. I'd be careful. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call, Teddy. Can you stick Take around care. for one more segment? All right. Let's look at some of the sure. levels and some of the currencies. We'll be right back, okay. folks. Welcome back, folks. We have the market in red territory. S&P's off by 21 points. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't forget to check out the Tiger Forex report, folks. Uh, and Teddy, I just want to jump right into it. Maybe we could talk a little bit of yen, because I know sure. the yen has been doing some stuff. Gold really getting hit. Uh, what mm-hmm. do you think of the yen action as we push push some lofty levels here? I'm pulling up the chart as we speak, as we're trading at 142.24. You've talked to us. I mean, it's interesting when I look at the dollar index, Teddy. Versus something like the yen, which, boy, you got a trend, man. We're making new Mm -hmm. recent highs today at 142.25. You got gold pulling back recently, as usually could be the case, as that yen trades higher. Yes, well, we have new new highs coming today, and that's for sure already, which is nice. Uh, I like the trend, you know. I mean, even with the Fed on pause, I think that you're overall you have strength in the U.S. dollar yen. I'm a buy break. uh, 
uh, forecast right now for this market for a while. I see no reason to think that the trend would uh, start to become very bearish. For I don't see any reason why it would. For I mean, There's no variables, fundamental or technical, that I can see coming about. I really do like the um, the lows that we set a couple few weeks ago. I think that's a very good support base for uh, the U.S. dollar yen. Even if we have a pullback, I think you're going to find it hard to fall below that area. Um, and I like I like higher move highs over the next, uh, not just few sessions, but over the next few weeks for the U.S. US dollar yen. Nice. You can't deny the trend, man. 142.26 for sure. And and that price level looks at about 139. Is that where you look in the end about where it was at beginning of June? Uh, look for some yes, support? I, I would say the lowest I would see them getting to, down to would be about 138 half. You know, but yeah, nice. around 139 even, I think you have a very good support uh, level there. Okay, nice. Well, Teddy, I appreciate it as always, man. Uh, we appreciate the education as always, and we look forward to talking to you next week, man. All right. Sounds good. Take care, Tommy.